So that leads us to the moral and ethical obligation. Uh, I see uh, pictures of, of great men and women on your walls here at the Institute. And I, I see at least two pictures uh, of clergy, clergymen. Uh, uh, it's always been said that the church is the gathering place, or has been, has traditionally been the gathering place for black people to get information, to fellowship, and to uh, uh, worship. Education conquers stigma, but there's still that, that uneasy place. Mm -hmm. So what has your experience been, and what would you like to see happen with regard to black churches in Los Angeles and then the rest of the United States? I think black churches certainly are um, an important place to mobilize. Mm -hmm. um, I also think that the black church in America gets too much of the credit for what's right in black America and too much of the blame for what's wrong in black America. Um, I don't believe there's such a thing as the black church. Mm -hmm. you know, I think that there are as many black churches as there are buildings in which black people worship. Mm -hmm. And so this whole notion that somehow there is something that quote unquote the black church is or is not doing is, you know, absurd. Um, what I have found over the years that um, there are black churches that are doing remarkable work. Uh, there are black churches that have been leaders and ahead of the general population in fighting HIV. Mm -hmm. uh, there are black ministers that have been heroes in this fight, have been giants in the efforts to end the AIDS epidemic uh, in um, communities, even before they understood the magnitude of the AIDS epidemic in black, in black America, mm -hmm. because they understood that suffering anywhere is suffering everywhere. Um, there are also black churches and black ministers uh, who are not yet there. Uh, there are black ministers that are suffering from you know, any number of barriers that prevent them uh, from stepping out on this issue, you know, either their inability or reluctance to talk about sexuality or their inability or reluctance to talk about homosexuality or their inability or reluctance uh, to talk about drug use, you know, or not feeling like you know, these kinds of social issues are appropriate social issues for them to take on. Mm -hmm. So there are any number of barriers out there uh, I certainly believe that it is imperative you know, for every institution in black America to play a role in fighting HIV. Uh, that includes the churches. That includes the civil rights organizations. That includes the fraternities and sororities. That includes our academic institutions. That includes our elected officials. That includes our media organizations. That includes you know, commerce and industry. You know, uh, all of them need to be engaged. Mm -hmm. uh, we have worked with a number of churches both locally and nationally and in fact internationally. Um, and I think by and large, when you have a conversation and you meet folk where they are, mm -hmm. you meet clergy where they are, you meet congregations where they are, and you allow them to engage at that place, mm -hmm. you know, that in fact, you no know, black folk that are you know, people of faith, you no. Know, institutions of faith you know, are eager to do what they can in fighting HIV. I also find that when you meet folk where they are, uh, they are often eager to move from where they are uh, to where they need to be. Mm -hmm. And so our strategy in dealing with you know, not just the clergy, but certainly you know, faith-based organizations, is to find out where they are. You know? And so, come on, brother man, where are you? What can you do? Well, how do you yeah. do that? Yeah. I mean, in practical terms, how do you do that? You just create a conversation? You just... How do we do everything we do? You talk to folk. Mm -hmm. That's how you do it. You, know? you call folk up and you say, we got a problem. We need to talk. Mm -hmm. no. And so what are you doing about the problem? Now, what can you do about the problem? No, no matter, it doesn't matter how little or how big it is. No, what can you do about the problem? Right. And I think that 
it has been our experience that we are welcomed when we have that conversation when we go at it without any preconceived notions, without judgment. You know, um, I don't need everybody to be everything. No. I need everybody to be something. No. So you're a church, you know, and today you can't pass out condoms. Maybe you can get people tested. No. Today you can't talk about homosexuality. Maybe you can talk about women. Today, um, you can't deal with drug users. You know, maybe you can deal with gay men. No. Doesn't matter. No, because the, the, the thing about it is HIV is a huge problem. Right. <laughs> and, 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 and it's going to require a huge response to get us out of this mess. But we got into this mess one infection at a time. And we're going to get out of this mess one person at a time. So the secret is not to be afraid to talk to anybody about anything. Because, you know, the, the, the beauty of the life experience is that we actually get a chance to start anew every day. Mm -hmm. Every single day. You know? And so today... You might feel whatever it is that you might feel. But I know tomorrow you get to start anew. And so you might have opinions that I may disagree with, particularly around what are the solutions around HIV and AIDS today. Mm -hmm. You may not feel like you can do anything or want to do anything today. But I know that tomorrow you get a chance to start over. And I get a chance to talk to you again. Mm -hmm. And it really is as simple as that.